welcome to another episode of the ITEL Insights Podcast. My name is Dane ITEL and I am the founder and lead analyst for ITEL Insights. Uh, today we're going to be going over the Greater Vancouver Detached Market. Uh, the June data has come out and uh, while the headlines might seem better, um, it, the devil's really in the details. So we'll get to all, all of this here in due time. Uh, before we do uh, enter into all the content and the charts and the data, um, I, I do apologize about not being able to get out the condo, uh, condo information there last month. Uh, we will release that, of course, this month upcoming. Last month, um, as some of you noticed, there might have been some difficulty on the website with the ordering process. We have been uh, trying to make that seamless and update it uh, in the back end. However, uh, it wasn't as seamless as we would have hoped. So this month, we are going to be introducing a, a few new products. We are actually going to be covering the whole uh, entire market at Greater Vancouver for a monthly subscription price. Very proud, very happy to announce that uh, Michael Campbell's Money Talks will be a promotional partner in that. Um, that will be up on their website probably within the week as it will be with ours. So there are a few exciting things coming out for ITEL Insights and as I said that we are updating our website. Uh, one thing that I will ask the followers, uh, if you don't mind, maybe could you send, send me a uh, testimonial um, uh, about how I tell insights, contents, charting, uh, different methodology has really helped you out in your real estate uh, curiosity, investment, uh, or, or any of the kind, uh, as we are going to start putting testimonials on the website as well. Um, so if you could send that, I would appreciate it. Again, the subscribership and the uh, views are continually going up, so thank you for sharing our content with your platforms. And now, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into the charting here and uh, why everybody tunes in to uh, to follow. So, basically, Greater Vancouver's detached market did uh, see a temporary rise in the sales prices, albeit only two percent. So, the actual sale price for June came in at one million one hundred one million six hundred and nineteen thousand. Let's call that one point six twenty for the uh, easy sake for the rest of the segment. Um, so yeah, it, it increased uh, 2% from uh, last month's sale price of 1585000 So um, that being said, as you can see on the charts, we have indicated a new yellow downtrend line. Now we do need some more data to confirm that before it actually does turn orange. But as it sits right now, um, we are creating lower highs. Lower highs indicate a downtrend upcoming. This downtrend that is possibly going to uh, solidify itself is fairly staunch, um, fairly rapid downcline. Uh, so, so that'll be interesting to see if that continues to hold up. Um, what we're noticing here in, in, in June, uh, there was more sales undoubtedly than the previous two months. Okay, but the two months were the worst months in history. So let's not get too happy that we beat those. This was supposed to be the pent up demand that was relinquished into June because it was the first time we were out, we we're gonna buy all these houses, said some pundit, some um, analyst. And, and you gotta be kind of careful these days to who, who calls themselves an analyst. If they're continually perpetually up and you know, in, in the face of even some reality, they're, they're more of a market activist rather than a market analyst. If over the past two, three years that they didn't even flip flop from going negative to positive, they were positive the whole way through, they're unabashedly wrong, right? So, so it is kind of time. There is enough data now, and in, in, and it has been enough of a, a choppy or, a, or a, a market that that was hard to predict. So there is some track record of maybe who does it better than others. I tell Insights has steered you 100% uh, when the market was low. We said, hey, look for some uh, some rebound to the market. Sellers can take advantage of it. Stress test mitigation is in, and that was back during 2019 course into early 2020 when prices reached 1.7 million in February unlike the majority of the market that was saying hey we're back we we're saying please no sell into strength um, what everybody saw as was the light at the end of the tunnel I tell insights had said hey it's a train lo and behold it's a train so um, there will be light at the end of the tunnel but the train does have to pass through first so that's the phase that's kind of going on right now is, is a train's going to come and hit a bunch of folks um, hopefully our clients and our listeners followers have uh, taken shelter at the side of the rails and will uh, let the train pass by and we'll come through and uh, collect properties on the cheap now let's get into the sales. While the inventory is very, very interesting, the sales is the headline. So we'll try to de or we will debunk these here rather quickly. So what you'll hear is um, June was better than the previous two Junes, and June was better than May. This this most recent data point. True. And uh, just this morning, thank you to Simi Sara. I was on her uh, radio show for uh, Mornings with Simi and interviewed again. Um, and, and the quote uh, that kind of kicked off the, uh, the segment was the chairman of the board saying, wow, sales are up 65% from May. 
So the market has some resiliency. It looks like it's coming back. Really? Really? Like 65% from a next to nothing number and you're bragging about it? That's that's odd. So um, we did kick off the segment with saying, hey, listen, the board has been market activists um, at the beginning of the year. Not that anybody wants to mention about any of their forecasts other than I tell insights. We'll share ours all day. Uh, the board did call for an 11.3 percent increase in Jan or from January to the end of the year. 11.3, not 11, not 11.5, but 11.3. So they're fairly exact. And, and, and now we've seen a complete flip flop. So when you've put out forecasts before that have completely not come true, you do look for uh, reasons to rationalize your, 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 your previous thoughts. So instead of you know, capitulating to what the market is actually saying and maybe guiding, or giving out a, a new guidance, a new forecast, they're trying to stick with it and saying, hey, things aren't that bad. Well, they are. Um, and so let's get into the June sales. Again, the accepted offers in June were 873, definitely higher than May of 544, and again, higher than April of 392, but not the numbers that anybody should be bragging about beating. And then they say, okay, but you know, we're in a COVID effect, uh, coronavirus era, and 2018 and 2019 weren't affected by that. Absolutely true. Um, that being said, there was only 100 more sales in this June than the previous two Junes. So, and all three Junes were the worst in the previous 15 years. So June 2018, June 2019, and June 2020 were bad months, but that hasn't been a prevalent sentiment uh, throughout the market. It's, is it good, is it bad over the past two years? Well, I tell Insights has said, you know what, we will be trending lower going forward. So, I mean, it, we're, we're again, we're, um, we're seeing validation into our forecast, but most will claim June 2020 as a victory of some sort. Well, we really don't see it that way. And if you want to talk about June and the pent up demand and saying that 873 sales was from pent up demand, again, incorrect. As we know, the sales in the month were from previously, or previously accepted offers uh, in, in months previous. The June accepted offers were only 561, by far the worst June in the past 15 years. So again, this pent up demand isn't a thing. If, if it is a thing, it's a blip on the chart. Um, I'll, I'll toss the chart up. Now I should toss it up a, a little bit sooner as I was getting into the, the uh, sales d uh, data. But as you can see, we're, we're, we're living in this market or this market channel below 1000 sales basically since 2017. That's, that's, that, that's not a place of any strength. Um, we, we would definitely have to break out of this channel to see that. But what you will actually continue to see as we go forward into this choppy market and, and, and definitely into a, a buyer's favor is buyers starting to be uh, hesitant in, in purchasing. Far gone from the frenzied mentality uh, of 2016 and 2017 when, where, where, where prices were offered at the highest price ever and then there was multiple offers. There were, there were buyers down the block tossing money at the seller saying, I will pay the most money, even though you're asking the most money in history, I'll give you more than that. What you will see into 2021 as prices are lower is people being fearful of overpaying for a depreciating asset. And by that we mean there won't be that many sales, even though there's a ripe amount of opportunity, a ripe amount of investment opportunity by having a, a ton of inventory and having prices near the lower end of their market thresholds, depending on which area they are, they are in. So, you know, it, it'll be an odd phenomenon, but it will be true. And, and then of course the sales will start to tick back up after the sales prices start to come off of their bottom. And, and then it'll be Johnny come lately and they'll still do well, but not as well as the people that actually do take advantage of this historically opportune time. Um, so now let's get into the inventory, which is something that has been missed. A um, lot of talk about pent up demand. I didn't see it that way. Obviously the market doesn't either in reality, um, or else they would have seen some higher accepted offers in the month of June. So it, again, in June, the inventory rose above 4,200. So the inventory is starting to break some technical features. Let me just toss this up on your chart here before I forget again. Um, and, and, and what we mean by breaking technical features, you can see the downtrend, the conservative downtrend that was basically began in 2012 has just been broken again after, after re-entering into this phase. That uptrend has held, um, that, that found the low of 2015. So the uptrend is held, holding. The artificial ceiling has been broken. We're above 4,200 active listings right now for the first time since 2019. 
And the month over month, uh, or the, the new inventory, the new listings in the month of June was 1,942. That's 700 more new active listings than in the month of May. In sales, like just the sales, which is the better number than the accepted offer, so we'll give them their best shot. From June over May, there was only three, plus 329 sales. So really, the inventory is doubling the amount of sales going on and that will continue to be once you continue to see this effect of inventory continually rise and sales remaining dormant is will just be natural competition amongst the sellers sellers have to compete with each other at a lower price in an attempt to try to attract the few buyers that will be out there and one other thing that is current um, are some high sales going on so we saw a 17 million dollar mansion sell for 12 million dollars huge discount um, but still 12 million. So that 12 million goes into the average sale price of the overall market of Greater Vancouver. So that is kind of that methodology right now. Nobody, and I, like not too many people want to want a spec lot, want, want uh, land value properties, but they, they don't mind paying money for that $17 million uh, mansion that will only, that is selling for 12 million now. So, and what's interesting about that, the price didn't actually reduce, it was just a negotiated price down to 12 million. So when you can skin the cat at the high market and, and not really be too concerned about a bottom falling out of the mansion, I mean, a mansion is a mansion. However, a plot of land, you wanna buy low because there's nothing to redeem, there's no redeeming quality. You're actually gonna have to put effort or money or time into it to see it appreciate in value. Um, so that's where that different methodology uh, currently sits. As we go forward and into 2021, and as these mortgage deferrals stop, and, and, and as the government actually allows you to evict somebody from your property that hasn't been paying rent for the past few months, um, you'll, you'll see a, an increase of inventory re return to the market. Now, that has to see lower prices just on its own volition, but also when the buyers stop buying the mansions because they see those as, as the, the deal of the current market, they'll actually start to see some lot values be the deal as the market and future uh, speculative properties. Now, what will happen is when the 12 million uh, sales kind of start, uh, start to halt and you see more average $1 million sales permeate through the market or $800,000 lot value uh, sales permeate, that has to lower the average sale price, which of course will come into align with our forecast of 1,400,000 in 2021. What's odd about that is as that's going on, the, the fear will continue to rise in the buyers because no longer is the average sale price 1.620 million. It's down to 1.4. Oh my gosh, where is it going to stop? How low is low? Before I tell insights, before we identified the market threshold, the market channel, the, the market cycle, nobody really knew what, where was low. That is a huge advantage that ITEL Insights does offer its clients. Again, we do the analytical interpretation to offer you guys the actionable intelligence, right? So um, I, I, there are a few markets inside of Greater Vancouver that are completely owner-occupied investable. Now, what do I mean by owner-occupied investable? I mean that the market threshold or, or the market price is challenging and testing the bottom of the market threshold. Does that mean that we've broken all the downtrends? No, not necessarily. So this is for the owner-occupied prices in some areas are down 35 plus percent, others in, in, you know uh, above 30 percent, and that's well within their market bottoms. So if you see the the perfect property and, and you want it to be yours, that that you, you you can probably get the green light depending on which area it is. Obviously, there's a, there's a few amount in that particular region to go ahead and purchase. Other areas, there's some areas that are only off 2% from their highs. We got to stay well away from those and, and, and actually be selling into them before they have a prolonged downtrend phase as the rest of the market starts to recover. So um, th th there's a lot of interesting factors that are going on. And, and you know, so, some the market right now is could be compared definitely not as an apple to an apple, but almost an apple to a watermelon. There, there's different segments of the market that are moving, but the overall market will, will still definitely continue to capitulate, continue to go lower as this methodology continues to change from maybe it's an even market where it was quote unquote debatable the last few years. Um, it wasn't, it was low and then there, it, it was over uh, overcorrected. And so prices of course had to come back up and then it went too high. And now, now we're on our phase down, going down lower, which hopefully this next upcoming challenge of the bottom will be the, the, the final threshold into 2021. We'll, we'll consolidate prices around 1.4 million and prices can go higher. If 1.4 million does not hold, then, then the next threshold that we look to is 1.225. So that'll be a 31% correction from the top. And, and I know our followers have heard this information before, but it's not bad to reiterate. 
Um, and, and, and so again, inventories rising rapidly, sales are remaining dormant, and, and prices during um, what was perceived to be the, the snapback month for all the months that the two months that we previously were uh, held hostage in our homes really was a blip on the radar. Stayed within the channel. However, the inventory has broken out of its uh, its um, technical features that it had been held in before. So again, inventory is rising, sales are dormant, and, and, and sale prices have a have a, a, a new higher low. However, uh, or sorry, a lower high, and, and that will continue to uh, create a, a downtrend, which prices will ultimately go and test the bottom of the market threshold. Um, again, thank you for being a follower, and uh, hopefully, uh, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Um, we do release content uh, at least twice a month. This month, we're actually going to toss out three. Uh, we are going to be updating the Toronto market as CMHC uh, did their update last month. Again, for those that do follow us uh, rather frequently, you'll know that we did have comments about that with the Simi Sara show a few weeks ago. So um, that will be coming out this month along with the condo market update. So once again, please uh, send me a testimonial if you found our content that has helped you out over the past few years. It'll be something that can greatly benefit me on the website. And of course, I will not put your full uh, first and last name. I'll put your first name and your last initial. Or if you want to give me an alias, we can use that as well. Uh, thank you for listening. Please give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel. Take care.